the day, I would like to discuss with you strawberry tree or Muntingia calibora. According to Wikipedia, Muntingia is a genus of plants in the family Muntingiaceae with only one species, Muntingia calibora, named after Abraham Munting. It is native to areas from Mexico to Bolivia with edible fruit and introduced in other tropical areas. Muntingia calibora is a shrub or tree up to 12 meters tall with spreading branches. The leaves have toothed margins and are covered in short hairs. So let's look at the edges. The edges have, I'm not sure if you can see it. They have like a serrated edge <clears throat> and it's kind of a little fuzzy. The flowers are small. The inflorescence, inflorescence solely with one bloom or clusters of two and three flowers with five petals that resemble a strawberry flower. The fruit is an edible berry that turns red when ripe. It is also found in Caribbean, Central and South America, Bolivia, Argentina, and in disturbed lowlands in tropical regions. <clears throat> this plant thrives in poor soil, able to tolerate acidic, alkaline, acidic and alkaline conditions, drought, however, does not thrive in saline conditions. The seeds are dispersed by birds and fruit bats. M. calibura has been introduced to Southeast Asia and naturalized in India and other tropical areas. It is called cotton candy berry, calibur tree, capulin, Jamaica cherry, Panama berry, strawberry tree, ornamental cherry, jam fruit tree, Singapore cherry, West Indian cherry, jam tree, and calibura. <clears throat> it has many other names based on the country in which it's grown, like in um, the Philippines it has its own name such and such. <clears throat> According to Logi's website, this tree is fast growing and its name comes from its flowers looking like strawberry blossoms and the fruit appear cherry-like. It fruits nearly all year long. The green immature fruit ripens quickly, changing from green to red in just one day. Uses M. calibora is grown and used as a source of timber and fuel. Its soft wood is used for rural construction, while the fibrous bark is transformed into rope and used as well to tie the lumber together for the homes <coughs> and buildings. Fruits are edible and sold raw or as jam. The leaves are used for tea. Traditional medicine, medicinal uses from the leaves include treatment of headaches, prostate problems, and gastric ulcer reduction. The bark has antiseptic qualities. Flowers are used as an antiseptic and antibacterial and antispasmodic and to reduce swelling. The fruits help with respiratory problems and is an antidiuretic, diarrheic, <clears throat> basically stops diarrhea. And also um, it helps to slow down or stop a cold in its track. Track, and <clears throat> it has been shown uh, to help diabetic patients since a small decrease was recorded in patients' blood sugar levels after consumption of the fruit. It is planted as an ornamental species for shade, and because the flowers are a source of nectar and pollen for beekeepers. M. calibora may be used to restore disturbed areas and stop soil erosion. It also offers shelter for wildlife and offers food for up to 60 species of birds and mammals. Cultivation M. calibora may be propagated from seed and cuttings. The seeds easily set in an area where the soil is moist. There is a bit of warmth and sun. In one test, seeds of M. calibora were placed in wet paper towels at 25 degrees Celsius 
and white light was applied. 44% of the seeds germinated and none germinated in the dark conditions. It needs to be periodically pruned back to maintain its size in a container. According to So Exotic, this strawberry tree or cotton candy berry tree, um, the strawberry tree name is, um, there's another tree that's called that as well, and um, it's not to be confused with this one, as that one has a s spiky outer red coating that's kind of rough, and, it, and that's the fruit of that tree. And it's more for or ornamental purposes, not for eating. And I think it's, it could be toxic if you eat it. So, so don't confuse this M. Calibura with the other strawberry tree, which I don't know the scientific name of. But I saw it at Lowe's once, and then I had to research it before buying it. Because it was sold in the plant section, plant trees, <clears throat> tree section. So this tree, cotton candy berry tree, has berries that taste like a cross of butter, popcorn, and cotton candy. The tree is small to medium sized, fast growing tropical, subtropical plant that tends to grow quite tall. The fruit are loved by birds and squirrels, but it fruits prolifically almost year round that it's not a big deal. And it only has a few fruit at a time so that's why it's not used in mass cultivation to sell and, and also it has a short shelf life being that it can ripen from uh, it can just ripen from one day to the next from green to red the fruit are loved by birds and squirrels and so it may require netting. The fruit isn't found in local stores as it has a short shelf life, as I said, since it can go from green to bright red and ripe in one day. It is said to be easy to grow and thrives with little care once it's established. It is said <clears throat> that the tree only grows to 40 feet at maturity and the branches tend to grow nearly horizontally. The blooms attract pollinators And the berries are antioxidant rich with vitamin C, calcium, phosphorus. The looser the roots, the taller the and healthier the tree will be. So keep the tree from getting root bound if they're in a, in a pot or move them to larger pots. <laughs> they do well in well-drained soil of general potting mix. Stay away from uh, any wet mucky soil that doesn't drain well. Fertilizer. Fertilize sparingly 10 inches away from the base. Try annually with slow time release. Without fertilizers it grows very slowly. Heavy salts in cheap fertilizers will damage or kill the plant altogether and destroy its roots. So it's best to use a fertilizer that you're familiar with and a pricer one that is of high quality. Grow zone and light. This gem fruit tree is grown best in zones 10A to 11 with 80 to 100 percent sunlight. Full sun is preferred. In colder regions keep the trees in a container and trim to a compact size to bring indoors or into a greenhouse for the winter. At most nurseries, these tropical fruits trees are grown under 20 to 40 percent shade cloth. If you plant this tree in a brightly lit area, there may be leaf burn. Slowly introduce the tree from a shady to a sunny area over a week of, or two to avoid stress and before planting it in the ground and water it a bit more after transplanting. Top Tropicals, this other site, um, says that this tree is in the Elocarpaceae family. It prolifically produces fruit once established. From spring to fall, you'll harvest two crops per day in full sun 
and with sufficient regular watering. Once mature, it will be drought tolerant and fast growing. The leaves are evergreen. The berries are thin skinned, the flesh soft and juicy, fig like in flavor, and filled with tiny yellowish seeds, too fine to notice while eating. Ripe fruit can be shaken onto a cloth or picked one by one. It is cooked into tarts or eaten raw. For more info, go to horticultural link under purdue.edu. The fruit can be infested by larvae of the Caribbean fruit fly and then it can't be eaten. The leaves are subject to spotting by several bacterium. Try to hose the plant down with soapy water or neem oil or purely just water. <clears throat> Nutritional value for every 100 grams of fruit. There's about 0.32 grams of protein, 78 grams of water, 1.56 grams of fat, 4.6 grams of fiber, 124 milligrams calcium, 84 milligrams phosphorus, 1.1 milligram iron, it is high in antioxidants and is a strong anti-inflammatory fruit. <clears throat> it is a self-fruitful tree that lasts 30 years. From a new tree, it takes 18 to 24 months before fruiting. The fruits do not ripen further once picked off the tree, but fruits ripen in individually and should be checked twice a day. The fruit may be eaten raw, frozen, or processed immediately as they decay quickly. Stems do not have thorns and great, are great for children to pick and eat. Roots spread very wide and suckers in moist soil. Suckers do not transplant and should be removed. Netting of fruit may be required. It grows best in USDA hardiness zones 10 through 11. Young plants need protection from the cold. Established plants withstand 29 degrees Fahrenheit with some branch dieback. It continuously flowers between 60 to 90 degrees. It likes humid environments. Deep water once a week when fruiting every two weeks at other times. Apply organic mulch to protect the roots from extreme heat and cold and to retain soil moisture. Keep mulch eight inches from the trunk. Prune to shape and reduce height but prune no more than 30% as the flowers occur on the new growth. Rooted cuttings and air layering are used to retain genetic properties of the parent plant. Uses for the tree are ornamental as a shade tree, as for its edible fruit and in bird gardens. And if it's not acclimated to full sun, which it looks like I either didn't water it enough or it um, was too too hot. Um, it likes evening shade, so morning sun and evening shade. And check out Living Color Garden Center's website for more info as well. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and see you in the next one. So here is the strawberry tree or Muntingia calibura and that's the berry so it goes from green to red bright red and it's about the size of a cherry and so this one is about oh I don't know four and a half feet five feet and I grew some uh, nasturtium at the bottom hoping that it'll spread out and kind of mulch the the bottom of it and over here I have some cilantro seed I grew in there I'm not sure what this other thing is but I hope everything survives and looks great and over here a nasturtium over here a nurse nasturtium and I just hope that it'll bring about beneficial insects and kind of uh, mulch the tops of the soil so it doesn't dry out too quickly. So um, hopefully I have a mixture of different fruits, vegetables, herbs, flowers all over the place. And I hope you give it a try as well. Thank you for watching.
have a great day and collect yourself some varieties of exotic fruit trees and let me know what you end up buying.